day, mates. Welcome to Zoomerang. As we zoom around Australia, we'll discover some amazing animals and sights. More importantly, like a boomerang, we are returning kids to what the Bible says about the value of life. We'll discover how precious each and every one of us is to God, from the tiniest to the oldest. Each person is made in the image of God, wonderfully designed to know Him and to live for Him. Out of His great love, God offers us salvation through His Son, Jesus. Kids will learn that life is valuable. Grab your sunnies, that's your sunglasses and your mates, those are your friends, and get ready for a fair dinkum time at Zoomerang. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, we do have Vacation Bible School. It'll be coming June 6th through the 10th. You can register for that already. Sign up for to be a volunteer. Sign up uh, your children to participate. We've got VBS kickoff. That'll be Sunday, June the 5th. And uh, you can read about that in your worship guide. We've got a ton of things coming up this summer. I'm just going to hit some highlights real quickly, okay? We've got a, a family trip to the Ark and Creation Museum. They're also going to catch a... Cincinnati Reds game there. You can read the dates and costs for that. We've got a family canoe and kayak trip uh, Saturday, June 4th. Uh, my church used to do this in Newton. Do you remember when they had the canoe livery in Newton? Every summer, that was the highlight. My church would come over and we would canoe uh, in the metropolis of Newton and we would just have a, a great time. So uh, we got a new precept class coming up as well. Uh, high school senior recognition. Uh, it's coming up too. That'll be uh, next Sunday. Is that next Sunday? All right, next Sunday. Uh, we got uh, women's life group kickoff. It'll be coming up soon as well. You'll have signups that you'll be able to do in June. Uh, and then uh, senior adults going to Pier Park uh, Tuesday this week. Uh, you can see the times and schedule for that as well. Uh, also, uh, Brother Josh says if you, if you play softball this year, you need to get with him. The sign-ups for softball will be uh, starting soon, so we'll, we'll have that coming up as well. Okay? Uh, uh, so uh, today is a, 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 a special day, and I always, get, I always feel like I get in trouble trying to do the Mother's Day thing. Uh, so uh, that's why Bradley makes me do it, so he can, he can stay squeaky clean over there on the front row. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's Mother's Day, so let's do this, okay? Uh, first of all, our, our flowers are, are placed here in honor of, of, of all the mothers that are uh, living, or if your mother has gone on to be with the Lord, the flowers are placed here today in, in their honor and their memory. So let's do this. Let's everyone stand in honor of recognizing our mothers, okay? We're going to do that. Let's give them a round of applause, okay? All the mamas stood up. <laughs> All right. So we have a, uh, a couple of uh, gifts, too, and this is where I always get in trouble. So uh, we, want to, we wish we could recognize every mother, but we always recognize uh, two mothers in our uh, building this morning. The, f uh, the first one goes to the, uh, the wisest. The wisest mother here, and uh, the only way that I know to do that scientifically is by age, okay? So uh, we could play Bible trivia, which was my suggestion, but that got voted down. So uh, we're going to do it by age, okay? So uh, I'm going to count down from 100, okay? When I get to your age, you need to get somebody to uh, stick up a hand or shout, okay? 100, 99, 98. 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, spring chickens, 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86. Anybody here on Social Security? Okay. 85, 85. Miss Nail and Miss Nan. All right. And our, uh, our, our final one is for the, the, the newest mother, which means you have the youngest baby. 
All right, does that make sense? Everybody follow that, that train of thought? Okay, so uh, I'm trying to figure out, ba- you know, everybody, babies are by weeks, right? You know, and it's like, how old's your baby? Oh, 73 weeks. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to, I, I'm just going to start with one, right? One week, two week, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six all right. How old? All right. Good deal. All right. Uh, moms, we love you guys. Uh, literally wouldn't be here without you. All right. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. All right. Let's pray and let's worship our Lord and Savior this morning. Father, we do... In all sincerity, thank you for the gift of uh, bringing great Christian mothers into our lives to nurture and guide and and take care of us, uh, to make sure the home is run well, and and to just pour out love and grace and mercy and discipleship on us, and uh, we praise you for them now. And God, we thank you for your son who has given his life to redeem us sin. And uh, we want to sing his praises now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand together? Find a mother this morning and uh, tell them you love them and you're thankful for them this morning. Let's, let's greet each other. Amen. Let's sing together. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand and his oath is Covenant and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Christ. And on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Praise the Lord, is my 
Of kindness, he lavished on 
Paul's epistle to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The Apostle Paul writes, he says, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from the selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Without hold, walk the shell of a man. Then a hand with a nail print stretched downward. Just one touch, then a new life began.
barren walls echo harshness and anger. Little feet run in terror to hide. Now those walls ring with love of warmth and laughter. Since I giver of life moves. the cross made a difference for you amen and amen as our ushers are coming forward I, I want to say a couple of things first of all happy mother's day to our moms out there what a blessing it is uh, to have everyone here and, and being thankful by god's grace over mothers and as we're thinking about mothers and motherhood i can't um, not mention what came out this past week concerning the leak from the supreme court so the um, it, it appears according to a, uh, a leaked decision and uh, a written, written decision by Samuel Alito from the Supreme Court, it appears that uh, the Supreme Court is going to rule uh, to overview, uh, over, to overturn Roe v. Wade, or, or in the decision coming out of the Mississippi case, uh, to overturn Roe v. Wade and Casey decision, which is what something been fought for for the last 50 years. Um, 50 years fighting this battle and so we celebrate that but we want we want to point out number one that that decision's not made yet 
And where, where God's doing something good, the devil's going to try to fight it with all that he has. And so we need to be covering the Supreme Court in, in prayer, covering Washington, D.C. in prayer, covering those uh, that, uh, that this is going to this is going to impact, it's going to impact our nation and could obviously cause continued strife uh, amongst different groups in America. So we want to we want but but this is a great victory and um, we want to be uh, continued praying and pursuing God's will in that endeavor. Uh, Secondly, I want to mention as we think about uh, our offering this morning, giving to the Lord. So uh, Jacob Bell gave uh, Brother Mike a, a, a tithe envelope today, but it's not Jacob's envelope. He's got his head in his, in his hands. Um, oh, this is good, Jacob. This is good right here. And so Jacob filled out a tithe envelope for Richard Tisdale. <laughs> and it says under tithes and offerings, Richard is giving a million dollars. Good news for the building program, we're covered, baby, two million. And foreign missions, man, they're, they're rolling in it. Three million dollars going to foreign missions. So I want to thank Richard and Jennings Tisdale. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's empty. <laughs> so um, we need to be encouraging Richard and Jennings Tisdale to follow through with promises they made to the Lord. Of course, we say that in jest, and it's, it's wonderful fun to think about God's faithfulness to us and our opportunity to be faithful to him. Would you pray with me? Father, it is our opportunity to be faithful to you every single day. And fathers, we think about our moms. We know that mothers are blessings from God. They're not perfect, as we're going to talk about today. But Father, we, we need them. We need godly mothers. Lord, we ask your blessings on them and thus through our families. Lord, we ask your blessing on this tithe and offering given today. Lord, would, we, would it be blessed by you, by the hands of God, and go forward to bless your kingdom and the families that you are uh, bringing into your, into your kingdom work and throughout the world for the glory of God, for the, for the blessing of the name of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
Well, let me invite you to take your copy of God's Word. I want us to open this morning to Genesis. The first book, the Old Testament, the first book of the Bible. I want us to turn, and I just want us to read one verse. Genesis 16, verse 1. We're going to look at a story found in chapter 15 through chapter 16. But the verse we're going to read is just verse chapter 1 as we deal with a, a subject that's probably different than any, um, any Mother's Day message that you maybe have heard, certainly different than any Mother's Day message that I have ever preached. Genesis 16, beginning in verse 1. Let's stand to honor the reading of God's word. And following this, I'm going to get on my knees and ask for God's blessing over his word, his blessing to you through his word. I invite you to join me if the Lord gives you grace. Genesis 16, verse 1, reads, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. Pray with me. Father, our hearts are mindful of the importance of our mothers and the importance of this day. But Father, we pray for your grace over your word and the need for your grace in the dysfunction of life and in our own hearts and our own families. So Father, would you speak through your word today? Would you speak through this preacher? Would you open our hearts that we might hear you? Even as we have heard you through the, the musical worship today, Lord, we are listening to your spirit to speak through your word and to change our hearts. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. When I was a kid, I would often watch old Rerun, reruns, black and white reruns of old sitcoms from the 1950s and 1960s. Now, mind you, when I was a kid, it was in the mid-1980s, so it wasn't that much of a stretch. But uh, sitcoms like Leave It to Beaver, y'all remember Leave It to Beaver, or Our Father Knows Best. And even then, while I enjoyed those sitcoms and all of the antics that went along with that, I remember thinking to myself, I don't know any families that look like this. I mean, in, in, in real families, in the families that, that I know of, and the families that I, I grew up in, and, and that my friends grew up in, you know, mom and dads fight. Uh, there's not always peace in the home. Fathers and mothers don't always have the right answers. They don't always make the right decision. It's hard. You know, we talk about this thing called the dysfunctional family. You know what? All families are dysfunctional. Because fathers, all fathers struggle with sin. All mothers struggle with sin. Children struggle with sin. And many times there can be a, a fair amount of pain and emotional scars left as a consequence of the dysfunction that we grow up in. And then what happens is, is we take that dysfunction and we end up bringing some form of that dysfunction into our own homes and our own families. And so this morning I want to talk to mothers who have some scars from growing up in dysfunctional homes or currently feel like the environment that you're in is dysfunctional and you're just not sure if you can handle it. Let me tell you some good news. <laughs> All families are dysfunctional. Family's been messed up for a long time. And we're going to look at a, a messed up family uh, and family situation that God chooses to use to bring a blessing, a blessing that would affect the entire world. It is the story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. Now, just a note about these names. At the point of the story we're going to deal with, the names are Abram, Sarai, and Hagar. 
Abraham, Sarah are covenant names given to them just a little bit later. And so if you hear me say Abraham or Abram, I'm talking about the same guy. Sarai or, or Sarah, I'm talking about the same person because I am certainly liable to mess those names up. And what we're ultimately going to see as we look into this story is that no matter how dysfunctional your situation is, the closer we by faith align ourselves with God's will, then the more we will experience the blessing of God. All right, so as we get into the story, let's look first at the promised blessing and practical brokenness. Promised blessing and practical brokenness. It all starts back in Genesis 12 where God, took, God, God decides to create a people for himself. A nation of people through whom he will lead and love and display his glory to the world. That was the, the Hebrew people who became the, the nation of the Jews. And through that nation eventually would be born the Savior. The Savior of the world that would bring a blessing to all mankind. Now he's going to start that plan with a na man named Abram. And God promises, makes a promise to Abram that he's going to, that's going to have ramifications through our, this entire story and, and through all of history. He says in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so Abram obeyed God. He left his homeland of the Ur of the Chaldean to go into the land of Canaan, which would be his new homeland. Now there's quite the story about how all of this unfolds, and we don't have time to deal with all of that today. And that's why I want us to move quickly from chapter 12 to chapter 15 as we... Move forward to chapter 15, where God meets Abram, and he reestablishes his promise that we just read, that he made to him in chapter 12. See, by this time, Abram was getting nervous about God coming through on his promise. He reasoned that, well, to be a great nation, that he would at least have to have one child. And up to this point, he and his wife, Sarai, had no children. And if, Abraham had, if Abram had died at this point, the heir of his clan was a slave named Eliezer of Damascus. The Lord talked to him and assured him that he was good for his word. Look at verse 4 of chapter 15. He says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not err. Your very own son shall be your heir. Now you may be saying when you look at this, which really doesn't sound like a whole lot of dysfunction, preacher. Well, that's because we hadn't gotten to chapter 16 yet. Because here's what's about to unfold. By this time, if my math is correct, Abram's around 85 years old. His wife, Sarah, is around 75 years old. Now, that's far too old for any woman to be having children. And all the moms in here said... Ain't that the truth? I'm 47. My wife told me she was pregnant, number one, that would be a, a, a miracle on the um, level of the virgin birth. But number two, um, it would uh, be, you know, devastating to me because I'm ready for my children to grow up and be gone. But nevertheless, that's completely beside the point. They're too old to have children. So the scripture says that Abraham believed God when he had promised him that son. He said, I believe you. But by this time, and it's credited to him as righteousness, by the way, but by that time, they're starting to wonder if they had misunderstood the promise. And so Sarai decided to step out and go ahead of God and just kind of get the ball rolling. So she decided to have her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, marry Abram to be his wife and thus to have an heir so that God wouldn't be called a liar or maybe just to get the ball ro rolling. That Sarah, she's got a maidservant. She's too old to have kids. God's promised, I'm going to give you children and through that bring a covenant that blesses the world. Nothing's happening and Sarah says, 
hey, Abram, how about marrying my maidservant and having a child through her? Now, anyone reading this text should immediately look at this thing starting to unfold and think to themselves, this is a bad idea. I mean, things are not going to go well for a number of reasons. Number one, God hadn't said anything about marrying a maidservant. Number two, no man needs more than one wife. Wanting more than one wife is insanity. And two women in any household equals more drama than any man wants to experience. I told you this would be a different Mother's Day message. Let's look at it unfold in the text, Genesis 16, 1 and 2. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go in my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. Now notice what is happening. Sarah is leading Abram. It is supposed to be the other way around. And what's worse, she's leading him away from God's will concerning his covenant promise. Sarah is trying to force God's hand on how he will accomplish his will. Do you want to know what the recipe for disaster is? Try to force God to do things your way. But God says, all right. God allowed Hagar to become pregnant. Are you ready for drama? Dysfunction? Verse 4 of chapter 16. And he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, that being Hagar, she, Hagar, looked with contempt on her mistress, which was Sarah. So Hagar dishonors Sarah, Abram's wife. And then what did, what did God say about anyone who dishonored Abram or Abram's family? That there would be anyone that blesses them, they would be blessed. Anyone who brings disdain upon them would be cursed. So things are about to go very poorly for Hagar. But you can see her getting a little hot. I mean, after all, I mean, she's a woman. And you can just see her getting a little haughty, looking down her nose at, at Sarah here. I mean, last year she was just a slave to Abraham's wife, Sarah. And now she is Abraham's wife herself and having Abram's firstborn son. And Sarah looks at this haughtiness and she thinks, well, I ain't having none of that. Verse 5, and Sarah said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. Now, did you catch that? Sarah blames Abram. May the wrong be done to me be on you, she says. Which, if you're Abram, you have to be thinking, look, woman, look back in verse 2. I just did what you told me to do. To which every man in all of history can identify with. But think about it. The wrong done to Sarah, though, in a sense, was Abram's fault. Because his job was not to listen to the voice of his wife and follow her. His job was to listen to the voice of God and follow him. And then lead his wife to follow him, God, as well. Now men, your wife isn't always right. 
If you want her to be the best wife and the best mother that, that she can be, you need to stop listening to her before you have sought to listen to God. Then listen to God and lead her and love her toward God's will. And women, stop guilting your husbands into doing what you want before you have talked to God. Now, I know, again, it's a strange Mother's Day message, I know, and I'll be sending out my resumes tomorrow. But for right now, some of you need to listen to this. Ideally, you are both talking to God. Ideally, you're both hearing from God. Ideally, you're both seeking His will and then coming together to discern what God wants for, uh, for you both. That's, that's what is, is ultimate, but that's not what is happening here. No, what's happening here is, is, is well, I'm not going to say my Mississippi redneck was happening here but I will say it the way I wrote it in my notes because I wrote this very articulate I thought I could get fired with this message so Abram is intimidated by Sarah and Sarah is upset and Abram just wants peace at home and so he acquiesces and said look you do whatever you want with her Sarah and so Sarah brings the pain and Hagar flees. She flees toward Egypt, toward her homeland in the wilderness. We are real good at bringing pain into lives, our own lives, that God would otherwise desire to bless. Everyone in this story is experiencing pain from this dysfunction. Sarah, jealousy and heartbreak. Hagar, pride, fear, worry. Abram, a lack of leadership to, uh, to Sarah, resulting in a lack of compassion to Hagar, who's carrying his firstborn son. Um, I, I love the, uh, the preaching and the commentary of uh, a preacher. He's a, actually a professor, a professor of preacher at Southern Semin Seminary named Abraham Cruvella. And Crovella writes this in his commentary on, on Genesis to des describe the result of this dysfunction. He says this, In any case, the familial chaos is total. Hagar, expelled, has lost her home while pregnant. Sarah has lost her maid, and Abram has lost a wife and a child. To say nothing of the loss of marital and domestic peace. I mean, let me just talk to the guys here for a moment. Can you imagine being in Abraham's position right now? His whole family is falling apart. And he, was, he is supposed to be the one through which God brings the covenant blessing to the world. Promised blessing yet practical brokenness. Describes the world that we live in. Describes many families. But now in this story, we'll move to the second phase. Unexpected promise and unbelievable compassion. So, as we're reading this, we're asking ourselves this question, what's going to happen to Hagar? This woman who had no part in the plan of God to bring about the covenant promise through Abraham. But through this unbelief of Abram and Sarai and her contempt on uh, Abram's wife, Sarai, she now finds herself pregnant by a well in the wilderness with no place to go and no means to care for the child in her womb. She's ravaged by dysfunction. But what she doesn't know is that she's also being pursued by God. And this one, ravaged by dysfunction, is about to be wrapped in compassion. The angel of the Lord meets her in the midst of her pain, and he tells her, look, I want you to go back to Sarah, and I want you to submit to her. Quite the ask under the situation. But for her to find blessing, she could not go on despising Abraham's family. God had already promised blessing through Abraham and a curse through all who would reject him. He's sending her back to honor Abram and Sarah. 
but also to honor the work that God is going to do and to bring through Abram and Sarah. Sending her back with a promise of grace, with a promise that her pain and her failures will not lead to ultimate despair. The angel of the Lord is sending her back with hope. Notice the promise that he gives to her as the angel of the Lord meets her in the wilderness. Genesis 16, 10. It says, The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. Wow. And what does that sound similar to? It sounds very similar to the blessing that God had promised to Abram. Verse, chapter 15, verse 5. When this happened, listen to this. This is what, what, Abram had, what God had promised to Abram. And he brought him outside and said, Look to the heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So a rightful question might be, why would God give Hagar such promise? She wasn't having the child of promise through which God would fulfill his covenant with Abraham. But she was having a child of Abram. So God had promised to do what with Abram's blessing? With Abram's offspring? To multiply them. And God keeps his word. So he multiplies all of them. Very serious God is about his promises. And God blesses Hagar. Because of her actions of faith. To return and to honor Abram. The one through which the covenant would come and bless the world. But would things be perfect for Hagar? Because she has the promise of God's blessing on her? Absolutely not. Uh, That child that she would have would be, according to Genesis 16, 12, a wild donkey of a man. His hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him and he shall dwell over against all of his kinmen. In other words, he's not going to be able to get along with anybody. He's not going to find a home anywhere. A wild donkey of a man, which turned out to be more true than any of us could imagine and has major ramifications throughout the world even today. But you do see the compassion of God shining through even as God named this wild donkey of a man to be Ishmael. What does that name mean? Well, look at verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. Now, Even through all the dysfunction, the Lord had listened to her pain. And as a result, she does something. Now listen, this is important. As a result of God listening to her and God blessing her, Hagar does something that no one else in the entire Old Testament, and I think New Testament does either, in the entire Bible, she gives God a name. She names God. Verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Through all the chaos of mistakes and dysfunction from every side. She met God. Who saw her. Maybe for the first time, any time in her entire life that she felt that someone had actually seen her and listened to her pain. And she got to see the God who saw her. And she got to see that God restore her from a place of cursing to a place of blessing. Now, moms, I cannot imagine how hard your job is. We as husbands and children put you on pedestals as superheroes. And certainly you are called to be, to to serve in a superheroic kind of role. But the truth is, is you're just human. 
you've been affected by a mom and a dad who struggle with sin, dysfunction in their home and dysfunction in your own home, a husband who struggles with sin, your own struggle with sin, your children struggle with sin. My guess is sometimes you wonder how in the world you're going to keep going, how in the world you're going to get these kids raised and keep the family together and even keep your sanity at times. Take hope in this. Despite your current situation, the Lord sees you. He sees where you are. He hears your pain. And he offers you hope. And just like Hagar, your blessing is connected to Abraham. Who became the one through which God would bring about the promise. Whose barren wife, 90 years Ninety years old, miraculously bore Isaac, the child of promise, from which God's people, the Jews, through whom were born the true child of promise, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Your hope is in that covenant. Your hope is to line yourself up in your heart, in your desires, in your will, with God's will and God's way. You are seen, you are heard, you are not alone. Rest your life on faith in Christ. Will things always be perfect? No. You may have some wild donkeys for children yourself. But in it all, in all the dysfunction, in all of the pain, in all of the hurt, you will find the blessing of God. Would you pray with me? Father, the blessing of God is it's what you want to give us. It comes through faith. It comes through lining our ways and our will up with your ways and will. It comes with Pointing, uh, submitting to Christ, submitting to the covenant promise of bringing blessing to the world. And Lord, we live in a world of dysfunction and brokenness and pain and hurt. A hopeless world where we would find ourselves in hopelessness if it wouldn't have been for you pursuing us and turning our hearts and turning our attention and sending us back toward the pathway of promise, sending us back to the place of your will. And just like Hagar was told to submit to Sarah and to honor them, Lord, I pray that as you send us back, that we submit ourselves to you. Lord, we still don't have the answers for all the problems we find ourselves in. We don't have the salve that mends the womb of every hurt and pain that we experience. But what we do have is you. Remind us today that you are enough. Father, I pray specifically for mothers here. I can't imagine what it's like to have the calling of God on you to be a mom to have such that crucial role to raise children, that crucial role to love and support a, a husband, to help him think clearly at the same time, follow his leadership as he seeks the Lord. And then all the pressures daily of what it means to accomplish both of those roles. It's more than I can imagine. It's more than any one woman can handle on their own. So Father, I pray right now that you would meet our moms here. Moms, if you're struggling here this morning, you just say, man, we get all cleaned up to come to church, but man, my house is not nearly as beautiful as what we put forward to the church body. And I need grace. 
Maybe you feel like Hagar out in the wilderness, not knowing what to do. The angel of the Lord turned her back home to submit to the promise and the plan of God under his will and his way. And maybe what you need to do right now is just pray in a way that you haven't prayed in a long time for your own heart to submit to God's will, whatever it is. And maybe you need to pray over your children. Maybe you feel like your children are like Ishmael who had the the name that reminds us of God's grace that the Lord hears. but had the actions of a wild donkey of a man who didn't submit to anyone. Maybe you need to pray for your children that they would submit to God's will and God's way. Father, we come as broken people, but broken people with the promise of God on us that if we turn from sin and put faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will hear us. You will restore us. Father, open our eyes that we might see the God who sees us. This morning, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you're out in the wilderness separated from the will and the purpose of God for you under a curse. But God will turn that curse into a blessing if you turn away from your own will and submit to Him, trusting in Christ as your Savior and your Lord. Maybe He's been working on your heart today. Is that something you need to do? Do you need to say, Jesus, I have made a mess of my life enough without you. Could you meet me in the wilderness and restore me? Because Jesus came down out of heaven. And he bore your sin, he bore your dysfunction, and he bore all of the, the results of God's wrath and the pain that can come, that can come from, from eternity of sin. And he gives you forgiveness and life through his resurrection. All you have to do is ask and say, Jesus, I follow you and follow him. In a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I'm going to be here. Brother Mike's going to be here. We'd love to receive you and Uh, help you understand what it means to take those first steps back to Jesus. Maybe you've got homes that you'd just like either Mike and I to pray for. We'd be happy to do that. Heavenly Father, thank you for seeing us. And thank you for giving us eyes to see you. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.
I can't tell you how happy I am to be done with that message. I pray it was insightful for you, though. And God's blessing would be on it to you. But the Cliff Bell's going to come. He's going to close us out with prayer. I'll remind you that tonight, that uh, this is time to spend time with your mom. We're not going to have uh, worship services here tonight or Awana. Uh, you should be uh, spending time, or the, the Awana option in, in Awana. Uh, spend time with them. Spend time with your family. Call your mom. Tell her Happy Mother's Day. Tell her you love her. Are you going to be in more trouble than Abraham was in the midst of all of that? All right. Um, what else I want to mention? I want to mention two things. One of the things we've been talking about in um, preacher circles is that it seems that God is calling less men to pastoral ministries. And that's problematic. And so we've talked a lot about why we think that might be. And, and one reason is, is that us as pastors are not doing a good enough job to call out the called. And so I'm just mindful that there may be those in this room that God is dealing with for ministry. And so if the Lord is dealing with you for ministry, and not just men, men, men and women both in different areas of ministry, there's no greater place of blessing than to be in the center of God's will. And if that's in ministry, I encourage you to pursue it. Okay. Um, the second thing is just to continue to pray over this, uh, the issue coming out of the Supreme Court. It will not make abortion illegal, but it will put the... the put the, the decision back upon the states where a lot of work needs to be done to see God's will done and, and lives protected state by state. All right. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Mike, going to mention something? All right. Good deal. I just received a message a couple of moments ago. Uh, um, Mr. Greg Vincent and Miss Debbie Armstrong's mother passed away this morning. Her name is Miss Mary. So we want to pray for uh, Greg and Debbie, their family. So, all right. Well, if you come and pray for us, and I remind you as we leave this place, we are not dismissed, but we are sent. We have the gospel, a gospel even strong enough to restore Hagar. That's a gospel that can change the world. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you now uh, beseeching you to be with Greg and Debbie and their family, God, in this time of sorrow and loss. Uh, but we praise you, God, that you're a God that gives us hope, um, that, that we don't have to mourn in a way that others do, that we have a hope in you. And on this Mother's Day, God, um, I pray that you will be with all the mothers out there. Thank you for the love and nourishment that they have given us. And even when things don't seem perfect, God, that you are a perfect God and that you're a redeeming God. Uh, as we go out into the world today, Lord, I pray that you will guide us, protect us, light our paths, help us to be a light for you, Lord, and help us to glorify your name always. In Christ's name, amen.